Now that we've made some queries, mutations, and subscriptions, I want to get into some more advanced querying. So specifically, I want to execute queries for pagination, pass in some filtering options, and also pass in some sorting options. So if we head over to our GraphQL API with hot chocolate, I've actually added those features to our GraphQL schema. So if I go to our courses queries, as you can see for getting courses, we have pagination enabled, filtering enabled, and sorting enabled. So we want to actually do all that on the client side as well. So getting into this, let me go ahead and start the GraphQL API over here. So got that running and we also have banana cake pop running over here. And what I'm gonna do is actually demonstrate the query that I wanna execute. So again, this is gonna be a query. We are gonna be querying for courses. So we'll just name this query courses. And inside here, we are gonna be executing our courses query. And that is just the query that I have over on the server that I just showed off that has pagination, filtering, and sorting. But we're gonna execute that. That takes multiple parameters. We'll come back up here in a second. But what we want back are these edges. And these edges are just the courses along with some pagination cursors. So we do want the cursor back, but we also want the node. And the node is the actual course. So if we look on here, we have the course ID, the creator information, the instructor, name, student, subject, etc. So in this case, we'll grab the course ID, the course name, the subject, and we'll also dig into the instructor and we'll grab the instructor's first name and just last name. And how about salary too? And maybe the instructor ID, pretty much almost everything at this point. But aside from these edges, I also want some other pagination details. So I'd like to get back the total count of our courses. And this property is like the total before pagination. So in our case, how many courses are actually saved in the database? And then some other properties on here, so we can dig into this page info. And I think I want all of this. So the start cursor, the end cursor, and then has next page and has previous page could be useful too. And on that note, since I'm getting the start cursor and the end cursor right down here, I feel like I don't need to query the cursor on the actual course edge. So I'm gonna remove that. And if I'm removing that, I really don't need to dig into these edges. Instead, what I can do is dig into nodes. And then this will be a little bit more shallow. So I don't need this node here because the nodes are just the courses. So we'll get rid of that. And that sums up all the data I wanna get back from this query, but we're gonna to have to pass in some parameters. So if we look at this, there's some pagination options on here. So after, before, first and last, and then we have order for sorting and then where for filtering. So we'll get into all these pagination options in a little bit, but for now, I'm just gonna query for the first 10 courses. So we'll specify that. And then we'll also order these courses. So in our case, we can just order by name and we'll do ascending. And then the last thing we'll do is filtering. So let's take all the courses where the subject is, how about equal to mathematics. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see this query get executed. So filtering looks good. We got all math. And then it looks like they're in name ascending but can't really tell because they all have very similar names. But we did see that all of the GEs are before geometry. So that's a good sign for name ascending. And then we only got 10 back. And we also have all of our pagination info down here with cursors and has next page, has previous page. And we do have another page because the total amount of courses we have that match this criteria is 12. So if we wanna see the courses after these first 10, what we can do is specify an after parameter here and this takes in a cursor. And in this case, I wanna pass in this end cursor here. So this end cursor is associated with this last course that we got back. So if we take this and paste that as our after parameter and put it in quotes, so it's a string, then we're gonna get back all the courses after this last course. So let's do that. And there we go, we get these last two courses. And then as you can imagine, before is like the opposite of after where we get all the courses before a certain cursor. And then last is the opposite of first, where we get the last X courses from a query. So this is the query I wanna execute in our client application with Strawberry Shake. The only difference is we're gonna be passing in these parameters at runtime rather than hard coding them here. So that being said, let's go ahead back into our Strawberry Shake client application and let's start adding this query. But as we recall, the first thing we gotta do is actually update our GraphQL schema. So if we head into a terminal for our project, then we can do a .NET GraphQL update, and that'll grab a new GraphQL schema. And if we look at schema.graphql, most importantly, we now have this courses query that takes in those pagination parameters, 
the filtering perimeter, and the sorting parameter. So now let's add our query document that actually execute this courses query like we just did. And I'm just gonna update our existing courses query because first of all, this query isn't even valid anymore. We don't have these fields underneath the courses query. We now have all the pagination stuff instead. So back in banana cake pop, let's go ahead and just copy all of this courses query. So copy that and paste that here instead. And this is fine. The only difference is that I want these as parameters instead of hard coding them here. So for parameters, similar to our other queries, we can see for course by ID, we pass them in by specifying them on this first line where we have the operation name. And then we just use those variables down inside of the query. So let's do that. And we'll also refer to our schema for these advanced types like the course type filter input and sort input. And in fact, I don't hate the idea of just copying all of these first and then just pasting those inside of our courses query on this first line right here. And then we'll have all the types that we need right here so that we don't have to look back at the schema and switch back and forth. But let's make these variables now. So we're going to have a first variable that's going to be an integer. The after variable, that's a string. Then the last variable, an int. Before variable, a string. Make sure we add these commas between these variables. Then the where variable, our course type filter input. And finally, the order variable, a course type sort input array. And then we want to use those variables in our query. So first, after, order, where. And then I don't have last in here. Let's add that. So use our last variable. And then finally, before use our before variable. Whoops, missed some dollar signs there. Let's add those. And we should be good to go with our query document. So now let's generate some code. And we've always had issues with this. Let's see if we can build and get this code generation to work right off the bat. And looking through the diffs, I think we're good on the code gen because we have this course type sort input here. So it looks like the code gen did work this time and we didn't have to do any kind of weird thing moving our documents around to the root of the project, it just works. So I guess it's our lucky day. But now if we head back to our program.cs and see we were executing this get courses query before and our schema changed. So none of this is getting picked up anymore. And in fact, all of this is very messy. So I think I just want to delete everything. And how about we start fresh? And then instead of littering the start method like we did last time, I'm going to move all the operations that we execute into their own transaction scripts. So what I'm going to do is have another folder up here and I'll just call this scripts. And the first script we're going to have is for our courses query. So I'll just call this the get courses script. And then eventually we'll have a bunch of scripts over here and we'll hook all these scripts up to console keys so that whenever you press a key, it'll run a certain script. So this script is going to be for getting courses. And we're going to be able to run it. So I'm going to have a method on here just to run the script. And then I do know we are going to have to have our generated GraphQL demo client in here. So I'll just copy that out of our startup constructor and paste that in here and just rename the constructor. So really the first thing I want to do with the script is just hard code some data that we pass into our query and then just execute it and make sure it works. So this was our get courses query and we want to execute that. And for this, just like what we did in banana cake pop, let's take the first 10 courses and all these parameters are optional. So we're just going to have null for after and then null for last and then null for before. And then for where let's specify what we want here. I think what we want is the subject and we set this to a subject operation filter input and we want the subject to equal mathematics. So let's do that. And then we also want to do some sorting. So that takes a list of course type sort inputs. So let's create that. And then in this list, we just want a single course type sort input. And what we're going to do is sort by name ascending. So this should match, I think exactly what we had done in banana cake pop, hopefully at least close enough. So let's execute that make sure we await it and get back our courses result. And then we'll just put a breakpoint here. So let's just console right line and put a breakpoint on this line and we'll be able to dig into this courses result. And now all we have to do is actually run this script. So I'm going to register this script in dependency injection. So we can register it as I think it could really be singleton transient or scoped. I'll go with transient in this case. And this is our git courses script. And then let's resolve that in our startup class. So we want our git courses script in here. And that's going to come through the constructor. 
And then all we're going to do is run that script and make sure we await this. So we got our breakpoint. Let's go ahead and run this. All right. Success. We didn't get any errors. I don't think. Let's see. Errors. None. But if we look at our data, we got courses back. We got 10 courses. The total was 12. That's what we saw in Banana Cake Pop as well. The page info looks good. We do have another page based on our total count and how many we got back. And then we just have all of our course data, which looks sorted still. Looks like we only got mathematics and we got all the data that we had asked for so that's pretty much everything to see with executing a query that takes in pagination filtering and sorting options but what i actually want to set up is the ability to page through our list of courses using the keyboard so in other words maybe pressing a will move us to the previous page in our list of courses and pressing d will move us to the next page so starting off we're going to have a loop we'll go with a do while loop, which i feel like i never use but it makes sense because I want to execute this courses query at least once and then get the user's action after that if they want to move forward or backwards in the paginated list. And then inside here, we're going to have a condition where we check an exit action. So if the user pressed a key that does not equal some kind of exit key. So in our case, I think we'll do enter to exit the application. So if they didn't press enter, then we'll execute this logic again and execute the query again. So we are going to have to get a key from the user. We'll put that into a console key variable and then just get that key from the user using console read key and then get the key back. But before we care about any of that, we're going to want to execute our courses query. So let's move that down here into the loop and then we're going to print out our courses in hopefully a nice fashion. Let's dig into this courses result. We're going to get our data back. We're going to assume that this query was successful. We could probably do some error handling here, but for this demo, I'm going to choose not to. And then let's get our courses and let's dig into the nodes, which actually has the course data and let's loop over this. So we're going to for each around here and that's going to be each course and we're just going to write out each course. So right line and let's make this nice with some string interpolation here and we're going to present this like a table. So course name. We'll give 20 length, hopefully that fits. And then we'll also have course subject and that'll have a length of about 20 as well. And then let's also add a header to this table. That'll look nice. So this is the name of the course and then the subject of the course over here. And then let's actually see how this looks before moving on. Whoops, okay, so it did work, but I have these dollar signs because I'm too used to JavaScript string interpolation. And then all this should be left aligned as well. So we'll fix that. And we could probably also make our columns thinner too. So let's remove these dollar signs because I don't want them. This is C sharp. Let's left align. So we'll do negatives instead of positives. And then we'll make our columns smaller as well. So we'll make about just 10 for everything. And let's try this again. So there we go. That looks good. And then if I press, how about space this time? There we go. We execute the query again. So now I just want to move forward and back through the list. So we're going to have to pass in different values for first, after, last, and before now. So I'm just going to keep track of those variables up here outside of the loop. So we're going to have an integer for first and then our after cursor. And then we're also going to have last and before. So let's pass those in now. So first, after, last, and before. And then we have to initialize these. For first, I'm just going to initialize it to five. So we're going to take the first five now. And I'm doing that instead of 10 so that we have more pages so that we can really see this in action. And after by default can be null. Last can be null as well. And before can be null as well. And this also means that this last parameter is going to have to be optional. So now all we have to do is update these variables based on what the user presses for this key. So first I want to tell the user what they can do. So let's do console write lines. And we'll say press A to move to the previous page. And then it's going to be press D to move to the next page. And I also only want to print these if we actually have a previous page. So we actually get that back from our query. So let's get that from our data. And that's going to be inside of our page info. So let's just get our page info into a variable because we're going to have to use it quite a lot here. So if we do have a previous page, then we'll print out this prompt and actually give them that option. And if we have another page, then we'll give them the option 
to view the next page. And now what we have to do is actually act based on what the user presses. So if they press the A key, so console key A, and we actually have a previous page, then we're gonna update these variables up here. And to move backwards, we wanna use last and before. So in this case, we're gonna change last to five. So we're taking the last five, and we want the last five before whatever the start cursor was. So that's in our page info, the start cursor. And then we should also set first and after to null. So let's make first an optional int and update those. So first is null now and after is null as well. And then pretty much just gonna do the inverse for moving to the next page. So console key D. And if they actually do have another page after this, then we're gonna set first to five. We're gonna set last to null now. And then we want everything after whatever the last course was. So that's the end cursor. And then we'll set before to null. And let me make this an else if as well. And then the last thing we'll say is press enter to exit. All right, so let's try this out. All right, so we queried the first page. We got the first five, so it makes sense. There's not another page. So let's press D to go to the next page. There we go, we are on the next page, but everything's the same, sadly. Oh, no, no, it's not. Now these are all geometry instead of just the last three. And we also have a previous page now, so we can go back there. There we go, now we got the first two GEs. And let's go to the last page now. And there we go, now we only have the option to move back. So we can do that. And we are going through the pages. So let's exit this. And actually the last thing I wanted to do is get rid of this filter just so that we get all the courses back. So let's just make that null now. And now we'll have some more unique data in here. So here we go, we got chemistry now. And we can move to these other pages and we even got more pages, so that's cool. And looks like everything's working as expected. So pretty cool stuff. Hopefully you're gonna apply pagination, sorting and filtering to your own client-side GraphQL queries with Strawberry Shake. All you have to do is add your query document that takes in pagination, filtering, and sorting parameters, and then update your generated Strawberry Shake code. And then quite frankly, just execute your query and pass in the parameters that you want related to pagination, filtering, and sorting. And then I was feeling a little bit extra, so I added this bonus content where we can scroll back and forth through our paginated list. I think down the road, I wanna actually use Strawberry Shake in a UI application like WPF or Blazor, and then I'd really be able to demo this without all this messy code, and I feel like it'd be a more realistic application as well. We wouldn't have to do all this like console write line and stuff, which I feel like is always kind of cluttered either way. Anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.